Hey friends, Dean here. Just a quick reminder before we get you over to your episode that for as little as $3 a month, you can help support independent content creators like us to keep bringing you the shows you love. Head over to buymeacoffee.com 3324 and become one of our Green Room supporters. Our episodes will always be free, but your support will help us grow. Visit buymeacoffee.com 3324 or hit the support the show link in our episode descriptions. It's that easy. Thanks in advance for your support. Start opening those chocolate bars because you'll need to find that golden ticket if you want to join us for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Stay with us. Get ready for the 3324 Podcast, where lifelong friends Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper share their love of all things music and movies. Dean has directed short films and is a music trivia buff. And Eric, trained in audio engineering, brings his extensive knowledge of music and film to the conversation as they discuss, debate, and celebrate their favorite albums, films, and much more. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 Podcast. Eric, another film episode. Yeah. Um, not quite sure why Wonka at this point um, in the middle of October, but why not? Why is there a season? Is there a season? Huh? Candy. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I there it is. There's there's the theme. <laughs> well, well, wait, wait, let's explore this a little, Eric. Is, is there a season for Willy Wonka? Is there a is there a, a time? Uh, it be it's more of a I don't know Easter time. Yeah. I, I don't know. Oh. Something like that. I don't know. All right. Should we well, doing I, Young I, Frankenstein? We should have been doing that. Gene Wilder. <laughs> Well, but we we've got uh, we we have our Halloween uh, episode already uh, ready to. We haven't recorded it yet, but we're going to be doing a very uh, special Halloween episode, so we can actually promote that on this because it'll be out before that episode. We're going to be collaborating with the uh, Podcast Brothers Film Championship. Mm-hmm. They're called. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> they're they're two brothers that do a. That's a lengthy. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, they do. They do movies. They do movies from certain years or certain decades, and uh, yeah. we'll be collaborating with them on our Halloween episode. Nice. So, uh, you'll have to uh, check that out if you're listening to this after October 31st. It happened already, but th- this way it's already in the queue, so you can go listen to it. You don't have to wait for it to come out because it already happened. Mm. I'm speaking into the future, as well. I'm sending a message to the future. If it's already past Halloween, it's there for you. Wave of the future. We already did the hard work. Wave of the future. <laughs> wave, wave of the future. Wave of the future. Wave of the future. <laughs> I think Nick. Did. Okay. Yeah. We, what's up? Nick knows what we're talking about, right? I think so. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm still, I'm still trying to connect it to Halloween in my mind. It's so. not the, it was from the aviator. aviator. <laughs> <laughs> wave of the future. Which has nothing to do with Halloween. Or maybe, I don't know. Maybe it does. Who knows? No. Anyway. I, 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 we'll connect anything up to. Uh, to any holiday, we make it work. Whatever, whatever holiday it is, it does. We're we're just uh, we're gonna have fun with this this episode. Oh, it's absolutely, a, it's a fun movie. great film. Actually, here's the backstory. Eric and I had actually, I don't know if we were before we started the podcast. We tried to do this, or I don't know if we were recording the podcast and we tried to do it, and then we it just kind of kind of fell apart and we just kind of shelved it. Yeah, but that was easily close. To, you know, three close to four years ago. So we're uh, yeah. Um, now we're giving it the official. The official do that it that it deserves. And so it's, it's no longer a lost episode. No, no, it'll be a re, it'll be refound or re uh, reinvigorated, or we'll put yeah. the D E U X after it. <laughs> do the redo, <laughs> the re the redux, as people say yeah. in, in well, certain parts of the country. Well, it's Coppola. Anyway. If you're joining us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, thanks a bunch. You know what? You can hit us up there on the socials. If you want to leave a comment, you want to talk some more about Willy Wonka. Uh, we've got Three Lies and a Truth, the, the Wonka edition. Yes. So we've yes. got that on, on tap. Yeah. I, I'm going to try and stump these chumps, see if we can get it. Um, and you can play at home as well, and you can let us know how you do there. Let's get to uh, our guests, Eric. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, uh, well, one of them is Chewing. So we'll just go with him first. I gotta eat candy. We gotta see what's in your mouth. We gotta know what's going on in there. You know. He's eating gummy bears. Sour cherries. <laughs> Sour cherries. Nice. Welcome, Sean Grady. Sean Grady is uh, the, one of the co-creators of Drama from the Past. Mm. They uh, do uh, historical reenactments, just specifically around the Revolutionary uh, War era. Uh, they are hot and heavy. I tried to get to them a week ago, but I had 
conflict, so I could not surprise yeah, you. Sean. guys are busy. Every, uh, every, yeah. yeah, that's great. Great stuff. Yep. It's treason season. Yeah, it's treason <laughs> season. <laughs> season. <laughs> Tis the season for treason. There you go. Yep. Trick, or tre- trick or treason. You could use that tagline. Hey. That's like free. It. That's free. If I see that on your social media, you're going to get Got a it. All right. <laughs> trick or treason. Anyway, so thank you, Sean. It's, it's been a minute, but we mm-hmm. appreciate you coming on. Happy and then, uh, Thanks for having me. Of course. Always. Uh, Mr. Nick TV. Yes. <laughs> and, Long and, distant and, cousin and to Mike TV. Or you're the sequel to MTV. And <laughs> <laughs> the and, light and, FM yeah. of, of, of music videos Mr. Nick Leshy, welcome Thank aboard you. Yeah. Thank this you so much for joining us You can find Nick's endeavors uh, At uh, City of Kick His blog, we're going to put a link to that In the show notes and we'll put a link to Drama from the Past On uh, on their Facebook page So you can go ahead and follow them Because they always have shows And if you're in the downstate New York area you know, they're Usually um, 99% of the time They're free so you can go check them out and uh, see what they're what they're doing, and you can check out both of these gentlemen's endeavors. Mm-hmm. As for Eric and I, you're checking out our endeavors right now. Mm-hmm. There it is. So we won't link anything in the show notes. We are we are the living. We are the show, show notes. notes. <laughs> yeah, this is the show. That's We're it. Part of the business. We are the business. Yeah. I am the fucking click, <laughs> as Ringo Starr famously said when. Uh, had to play to a click track when recording music. He didn't like that too much, Ringo. Mm. I am the fucking click. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get to the uh, we'll we'll get to the movie eventually, but uh, let's get to it now. So we're we're gonna if you're new to the show, we do some stats in the beginning. So we give you some factual information for you to chew on and to kind of tuck away into the into the back rooms of your brain. This way you can recall it if you ever. Uh, if you go to trivia night or, or wherever, and you need to kind of pop some of this up, you've got it. And then we're going to get to the, uh, the opinion and the fun stuff. So here we go. This was released in June of 1971, directed by Mel Stewart screenplay by the author, Rald Dahl, but not really. He kind of gave notes to the director of pointing him to parts of the book to reference. He really mm-hmm. didn't write anything. <laughs> he, just like, he gave him a list and okay, see this part in the book. And they're like, that's not enough. So, <laughs> so I mean, can, you imagine, can you imagine hired to write a screenplay and it's like, okay, go to page 13. Yeah. And then I, go to page 50 and there you go. There's your movie. I already <laughs> wrote, I already wrote the screenplay. <laughs> it's right yeah. there. It, this, it's it's there. <laughs> Imagine if Stephen King did that with one of his five hundred page right, books. Right here, like he dropped the whole volume onto the table with all little little post it note flags in there saying, "Here's mm, your movie." Mm. Uh, so anyway, that that didn't quite fit the bill. So they got David Seltzer to do rewrites, but it was uncredited because Raul Dahl, part of the 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 hook for for getting this movie done, was that it was going to be the screenplay by the author. You know, so so replacing him with someone else just wasn't in the card. So um, they said to David Seltzer, "Hey, you do these these re- rewrites. You're not going to get credit, but you know what? We'll we'll greenlight one of your films. We'll get we'll get something going." Mm. So he kind of paid him that way. Um, Have you guys ever read the book? Any of you? Yeah, yeah. Charlie, I like the, the movie. Me, yeah, I, I might I think I might have read the sequel, Charlie in the Great Glass Elevator. I don't know that I read Chocolate Factory. Chocolate sure. Factory is actually quite dark, which you yeah. know, I oh, guess it does kind of fit the uh, uh, the season, which is what I was yeah. kind of oh, where I was going with it. But it's uh, you know, I knew that was going to come up in the conversation. But yes, yeah, I just remember the book being very dark. You know, just decide. You know, so yeah, the movie was any indication of what the book was, <laughs> it would have been a lot. Yeah. Worse. Yeah, horror yeah they, had a, they, <laughs> they, they, they got a lot of the, They yeah. got a lot of it across. Uh, this had a three million dollar budget. Only made four million dollars in the theater. Really didn't do much of anything. It was kind of, kind of came and went. Mm. Um, oddly enough, this film was co-produced by the Quaker Oats Company, who was <laughs> is not in the movie business whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, but they were invested in this because they were g- going to be tying in uh, actual candy, actual Wonka candy, you know, to mm-hmm. sell to to the kids or the the population at large. So uh, I forgot who it was, but they convinced Quaker Oats to to come on as a kind of a financial <laughs> financial backer. And it's actually in the beginning credits. If you look at the very bottom, it says like Quaker Oats Company. Yeah. 
in the, in the beginning in the beginning credits the beginning crawl uh stuff it's a very it's the very bottom uh, so yeah very curious that you know this was kind of uh, a, a beloved book but then also made with the express intent to tie in candy mm-hmm. right? so, to to you know we're 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 gonna pay for this film or help pay for it because we want to sell the candy we want to make the, the wonka candy which they did and then it went dormant for a while and then the wonka wonka candy kind of came back i think another company bought the brand anyway um let's talk a little bit about casting because there is some before they got to gene wilder he was he was not the first choice but uh an irish comic spike milligan was was first first approached peter sellers almost begged to do it mm-hmm. uh, he's a little too creepy i, I just well he would have he would have fit more of the definitely yeah, would have probably he, leaned into he, the book i think a little bit more there yeah he's yeah, a little too it, yeah too dark yeah. um fred astaire actually said hey i'm interested in this and you're like Fred Astaire. You're too old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and then jo- and then Joel Gray uh, and the producers thought Joel Gray just didn't have the gravitas of the. He's a smaller guy. He's not very tall. He's very thin. Mm. And they're kind of like we're we're looking for something a, a little bit more. Um, so they got uh, they got the great Gene Wilder, who uh, we'll we'll get to the story. Of, of he pretty much made only one demand. Um, which really was a very uh, interesting. Nick, you want to go ahead and go ahead and take that since you're shaking? Your yeah, head. he had. Um, he said, "I'll do it under one condition, but this is non-negotiable. I either do this or I'm out." And it was uh, the first scene that you see him in in the movie when he's walking in with the cane, and then the cane sticks, and he, you know, he still keeps walking, and he looks like he's kind of old and feeble. And then he just does a somersault and jumps up and everybody starts cheering. So apparently they filmed that without anybody knowing. So it was a surprise to every all, all the extras on the set. So that applause was legit. Like they really, yeah. that was their reaction to seeing it. So, you know, it, it was a great, you know, great entry, I think, for the character. And he said the reason he did it um, was because he wanted everybody to then not trust anything that's coming out of Willy Wonka's mouth. Like, mm-hmm. is he being truthful? Is he lying? You know? So I, I think that was great. Yeah. It was a great, a great way to set the introduction for the character. Uh, and Sean, a lot of what we'll get to, we'll get to the characters, but since Sean, I mean, since Nick kind of, we, we kind of went there. Um, a lot of these characters get literally one scene each, each one of the, the kid characters, they literally get one scene before her, before they're swooped off to the factory, but we learned so much about them in in the in the, the one little vignette each one of them gets, right? I mean, that's that's you got to hand it to the you got to hand it to the screenwriters for that. Yeah, I it's amazing. Like, and and you you see how undeserving they are of the, uh, <laughs> the great fortune that they have, you know, yeah, well found. Baruka's dad paid for all the box, you know, made sure that she had that ticket. But uh, even the kids that got lucky, they didn't even seem to really care that much. It, it didn't mm. mean to them what it meant to tr- to Charlie, and that's what made him getting the ticket that much more special. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Snoogans. <laughs> Shall we play a game? It's over, Johnny. Wrong, sir. No! Oh, wow, man. Hey, if you recognize those sounds, then you're probably somebody who would like our show. We are called Did You Hear About This? And we talk about all kinds of news stories. It's like the 80s and 90s stuff that we grew up on. Yeah, this isn't stuff that's getting covered on the 10 o'clock news. I'll tell you that. You can check us out at Did You Hear About This? Show. We're on every single podcast platform. Go find us. Yeah, because he actually, yeah. As far as we know, outside of Veruca Salt's greed, yeah, he was the only one that really genuinely wanted. The other ones just kind of ha- happened upon it. So let, let's go through the cast so we can get that out of the way. Uh, we've got Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka, Jack Albertson as Grandpa Joe. Nick, this is our second Jack Albertson wow. episode, and you've been on both of them. <laughs> <laughs> There's remember something the there. I'm, I'm trying to, you know. Because I've I've done a bunch here, so which one was was he in? Um, Eric, Eric, you want to take a crack at it? It's a Wonderful Life. No, close. Oh, um, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 
Wow. He's the, he worked in the post office. Holy crap. Yeah. He's That's the right. one that had the idea to send all the letters. He was, he was very court. young in that. Yes. Yeah, very yes, young. Was, was, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> um, thinking, well, oh, I should have put that in my three truths. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. like, uh, we got Peter Ostrom as Charlie Bucket. Roy Kinnear, who's a great character actor. He's an English character actor. Uh, Henry Salt. Julie Dawn Cole as Veruca Salt. Yep. Leonard Stone as Square Deal Sam. Sam Beauregard. <laughs> uh, Denise Nickerson is Violet Beauregard. Dodo Denny is Mrs. TV. She's a gr she's got a great face for comedic acting and very expressive. Uh, Paris Themen as Mike TV, not to be confused with Nick TV. Our guest. <laughs> uh, Ursula Wright as Mrs. Gloop. Michael Bolner as Augustus. Uh, Diana Diana Sowell as Mrs. Bucket. Um, we'll go with. Uh, David Batley as Mr. Turkentine, and we'll stop there because he was um, one of my favorite characters, Mr. Turkentine. He's just the guy. He, first of all, the the whole school is being emptied, right? It's, it's like mass hysteria when when it's announced. So he, so you, you Winkleman, come here. What, what's going on? It's like, oh, no, you know. Class dismissed and a no, no yes. class dismissed. Class read dismissed. And meanwhile, the kids are just piling out. Anyway, if you look in the background, it's just like <laughs> like kids just like like mass exodus outside of this this school. Like like the rules, Sean just literally like went out the window. Yeah, I thought about that. It, 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 the the candy factory is opening, so that's it. Everybody out. Like the teacher cancels class. Doesn't even you know check with the principal. Everybody can go. Yeah, it's it's the seventies. I guess anything went. Yeah, it was just like mass. It was like mass hysteria. Uh, yeah. Over. They don't need over. an education. They just need candy. That's, that's it. So you need the golden ticket, and, that, and that's where the, the, what this whole story is about. Is is um, I don't know anybody that hasn't seen it, but if you haven't, we'll just sketch it out for you. Willy Wonka is a reclusive uh, candy maker. Uh, fact, solitary factory. No one ever goes in or go out. So it's very mysterious how he creates his concoctions. He decides to give a tour of the factory. He puts five golden tickets in chocolate bars throughout the world, which sets the whole world uh, ablaze with this mania, which leads to the first – Gene Wilder doesn't come in until 45 minutes into the film. The first 45 minutes really is a series of like vignettes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the vignettes don't even have much to do with characters in the film, right, Eric? They're the, like the <laughs> – woman like with the kidnapped the kidnapped husband <laughs> right yeah the they, they, they give you like all these different like <clears throat> side stories that have really nothing to do with the, they don't advance the story all they do help to tell is like the mania the right? mania that's going on and Wonka is, on? It, it is the center he is the world to, to you know uh this whole thing if, if only that were true right <laughs> we'd be in a much better place but, it's uh, your but husband's yeah, life, in your case, a long How long will it take to think it over? Yeah, that's great <laughs> stuff. You know, it's just yeah. They have, they have that vignette. They have the the auction. You know, with the with the your majesty. The queen comes in. It's it's implied that she's standing there, willing to pay whatever. Sitting uh, on the box for yeah for candy. Uh, it's just yeah. The computer, but you know, the computer will tell. Yeah. My favorite one is the psychiatrist. Yeah, it's like oh, I had a dream. The archangel came down and told me where, where the body. Oh, but it's a silly fantasy. And the the, the, the psychiatrist won't well, shut up and tell me where the dream is. is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where, where where did he tell you it is? Oh, it's just a dream. Shut up, pop. Stop. Don't tell me where it is. Yeah, and it just shows you. It, it it shows you how how silly the adults were. You know, it kind of it kind of cuts both ways because it actually shows all the adults. Yeah, acting like this. I think right? the only, the only weird, sane like, person in the room uh, is that one reporter who was pretty, yeah. pretty straight on and he's reporting it and he's like, yeah, it's, you know, I, I, you know, there's more important things to talk about, but, uh, I, for the life of me, I can't think of that, what that is right now. So it was like, <laughs> you know, but he yeah, kept it straight and satire. yeah, 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 yeah. Just great satire about, about how, how mania can spread. And like yeah. I said, it's, there's no, no, they don't show any kids in any of those vignettes. It's all adults acting crazy and acting like, you know, uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're actually, green, they're actually the worse than the kids, right? They're, 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 yeah. <laughs> they're children themselves. Nobody's grown up when it comes to this, uh, to this, yeah. you know, this candy and this guy and this, the, the, the mystery that is Willy Wonka. But yeah. yeah. And, and, and then you've got Charlie, Charlie Bucket, who is on the, 
he's on the really downside of poverty. I mean, he, you know, they, they're, <laughs> yeah. and we can talk, I, I don't want to, we could pull apart the, the, all the grandparents in one bed and how they go to the bathroom or whether or not they go to the bathroom. There's, there are bowls underneath the bed. I don't know if there's holes that lead there. Yeah, it is pretty. <laughs> uh, but you got, you got grandpa George, grandma Georgina, grandpa Joe and grandma Josephine. Yeah. Uh, grandpa George. He's got those thick glasses. He looks like he looks like Martin Scorsese's father. He does, um, actually, yeah, he was actually a World War II veteran. He actually couldn't see very well. Mm. Um, so what they had to do is, it, it, when, whenever they had to cue him or had him look somewhere, they show they, they like shot like a red light in the direction of where he needed to look because he was able <laughs> to see that. Um, and that's how he was able to get his his uh, you know get his acting done. Yeah, um, yeah, just. Uh, Definitely a European feel. This was filmed in, in Mu- mostly in Munich, Bavaria, mm-hmm. uh, West Germany. Interesting but- loca- locales. Very British, but a very sort of British production. Most of the actors are are British themselves. And the but then there's an American too. I didn't know was American though. Like you know, uh, I, I thought he was a, a British director. You know, when you watch behind the scenes, and you know, I hear him, I'm like, whoa. I yeah. kind of, that kind of uh, surprised me that he was actually an American director, but uh, at the yeah, film, the, the, you know, all these the places, family yeah. speaks yeah. English, right? Right, Nick. I mean, so it's it's yeah, it gives you that. I think they wanted to get that kind of. You don't know where it's taking place because it's certainly, definitely not the United States because you could, you know, it doesn't ha- it has that European feel. But then, yeah, the Mister Turkentine is English, but then the family is American, and so they it's kind of like that amalgamation of a lot of different. Which creates like this fantasy world. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it, it does create this kind of off-putting, a little weirdness going on. And and the screenwriter too that they brought in to rewrite. Um, he he he's. I mean, he did like the Omen. He did like these kind of horror, kind of weird, off-putting kind of things. So it's just the whole thing kind of feels off. But it's funny as heck. And you know, making it into a musical was also genius. You know, because um, it's not you know. It, it's not. I mean, the original source material is dark. It's like all all of his kind of you know the witches and um, all all that stuff. They're, they're kind of dark for kids' fantasy, you know. And he was he was annoyed when this came out. He was like, "This is not you know my story." You know, it's yeah. it's, it's it's about Willy Wonka. It's supposed to be about Charlie. You know, yeah. so it was yeah. So yeah, it 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 certainly lends itself to to a unique setting. Because you, they, they don't tell you exactly where they are. They don't say this is Ohio. They don't say it's France. They don't say where it is. It's just kind of here. Here's where this is taking place, you know. And it's and if and it has that multicultural feel to it, which gives it a unique gives it a unique flavor because it's not the hustle and bustle of the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, Sean, is this are these guys the original Breakfast Club? These these, <laughs> these five kids are they the original prototype Breakfast Club or or are they the inspiration for the movie Seven? Ooh! Wow, that yeah. is totally. We're going to. We're going to. I'm, I'm giving you two two roads two to ends go down. Of the spectrum, right there. Yes. I, I you got me with that one. I that never. <laughs> I'll take the first one then. Uh, the Breakfast Club. <coughs> hmm. No. Um, you got you got three guys and two girls all forced to to spend a day together. Yeah, to spend a day. With each other, yeah. But this is a little bit more of an adventure. That was okay. the tension, right? That's okay. hmm. all right. So now let's talk about seven. Then, do you think that that each one of these kids represents like a you know the greed and the, the greed yeah, sloth the and, and all that stuff? What do you think? Uh, yeah. All right, yep. you might you might have something there. Um, they all get knocked out. <laughs> <the end. laughs> That's true. Um, Surprise! There's no head in the box. Anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a couple places in seven that I can't finding it tough to make a parallel. I don't I'm not exactly I'm, I, inspiration. You know that that yeah. each one of these kids represent literally. Sure. I mean, right, Eric, each one kids, yeah, each one of these kids is literally a representation of, of the of seven a bad, sense. Yeah. Yeah. of a yeah. specific yeah. bad trait, right? Right. You know, except for yeah. Carl. Mm-hmm. Um, no, and it's interesting uh, that they that they carve them out so specifically. Yeah. And, and I think that's important. Each when you when you mentioned that each scene, they they needed to have their own little moment to just to kind of give you that idea. But even when they re, when they reach the factory, that that those moments are even pushed further 
and you and that's where the whole like the, the the deadly sins comes into play you know when you see them individual like augustus like scooping up the chocolate and you know the gluttony factor and she's screaming and she's you know the greed and and all that and it's just yeah yeah it's an yeah, interesting they, point it, i don't know if yeah i've never i've never heard that before but i never really thought about that I but it's you thought know, about it you know yeah. it's kind of they're right they, they meet their end via their their weakness right <laughs> via via yeah. their their sin yeah. Right. Is, is, is her greed and ends, ends up going down the, uh, down the egg decator mm -hmm. and Augustus, you know, so, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like what I'm not trying to bring people down, but when you think about it, this, I mean, this is kind of a, like, this is a kid's film, but it deals with these kids are not good. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, like no, and, and we don't get to see them redeemed either. No. All we hear is, well, maybe hopefully they'll be a little wiser. <laughs> right yeah. but we don't you know like so you don't see the kids like oh we're so sorry you know we're gonna be good kids it's like they because they're gonna go back to their terrible lives and <laughs> maybe be a little wiser yeah and the parents so, are i mean they obviously don't as the oompa loompas point out it's the it's the parents fault <laughs> you know because they're they're not doing anything to change the situation either you know so they are you know it's a very interesting uh, part of the you know, part of the play there too, where when you see the parents just are just as disgusting as they are, you yeah. know? So, yeah. Yeah. Cause all, all those kids seemingly get whatever they want Yeah, and they're spoiled. Whereas Charlie has nothing mm -hmm. and he's the most pure hearted one, right? He's the one that's, that's the truest to, you know, he, he wants this in, in, in a genuine fashion. He has, you know, just because he wants to, to, to win it and wants to go there. Yeah. Um, not because he's greedy and wants all the chocolate for himself, um, he wants hopefully something better for his family. So it's very interesting that the the kid that has nothing, yeah, you know, is kind of the the pure at heart. All these other kids are spoiled. You know, Mike TV. You know, with the, the father. It's one of my favorite lines. You know, Dad says I can't get one until I'm um, twelve or whatever. not to you or not to you. Get twelve, son. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get a real gun. look on his face. I'll like get a real like, gun when I'm twelve. <laughs> yeah, not to you, twelve. I will so. argue though. Okay, we haven't mentioned it yet, but I, mean, I guess I'll bring it up. But Jack Albertson, to me, uh, there's a little bit of a greedy streak in him, I think. Yeah. Most definitely. You know, that yeah. moment was probably my least favorite moment in the movie when he gets up out of the bed and he's dancing and he's, yeah. you know, I've got a golden ticket. Like, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> you old yeah. bastard. You know, um, get a yeah. job, mister. Yeah. It's like, you know, but he, he's, you know, living, you know, living, uh, I guess he's had such a horrible life that, um, I don't know what happened to these people. Like they, you know, like what, what happened to him specifically and his wife that they're bedridden and this, and they don't really explain it, but it's just, obviously they, they had a hard life and, and he's, you know, he missed out on a few things I'm sure. And he's kind of living vicariously through Charlie and like yeah. filling his head with all these notions. And this is the most important thing. This he's, the kid's got nothing else to dream about. And he's like, and I'm, I, I kind of find that suspect, you know, like, why would you be, well, he care. I mean, they you know. care about him because he, yeah, he, he does, but uh, it's like Charlie's going to give him the tobacco money. Right. And he goes, I got no right smoking tobacco when when a bread looks like a feast yeah so he's but he's not of, exactly doing anything to change he said he bought, he said he bought chocolate <laughs> the point is that he he could have gotten out of that bed for oh yeah any number of reasons but this was that this was the motivation was to oh you know because i got i want to see this as you know because he probably is just like charlie in that fashion like he just wants to see it he just wants to know yeah. You know, so, but uh, but yeah, but the way he goes yeah, about he it though, is, to me, is a little like you know, it's just like oh, it kind of kind of makes me angry a little bit when I watch that scene. Well, he's, a, he's just yeah. as much of a dreamer as his grandson is. I think that's yeah. what it is, right? It's Sean, he's kind of yeah, he's saying I've got a golden ticket, but then he says it's ours, Charlie. Like like it's kind of yeah. So he's living vicariously through Charlie, but I, but you're you're right. That, that that family looks like they've had nothing to live for, right, Sean? So it's kind mm -hmm. of like this is you know wow, this is something all of us can kind of kind of get behind. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess everybody has money for tobacco when they see you when they're struggling. <laughs> it, and Grandpa, I mean, and they're not infallible. They go they go into the factory and they yeah. drink the fizzy seltzer that makes it, and they're like, let's, let's do this. And, you know, they've seen somebody get theirs. It's not like this yeah. was, you know, and they still played with fire and they made them, and they got lucky that they burped. Otherwise, yeah. their end would have been really like 
the the fan. I remember seeing that going, oh, like, that's going to be awful. Yeah. And then nope. Grandpa burps, thankfully, and then they, you know, burping helps, you know, for once in your life. And um, <laughs> out loud, you know, burps are yes. great. You know, yeah. Belching, like, the yes. only way, Charlie, you got to burp. Yeah. <laughs> you got to belch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but Grandpa, yeah, there's a little, there's a little, you're, I agree with you, Eric. There's, there is definitely a little greed there and a little. Yeah. Well, he's, he's not afraid Elfish to tell it like it is, too, because he kind of really, he's giving like the side comments, too, about all the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, what she needs is a good kick in the pants. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Like, he, you know, he's not afraid to kind of, yeah, to call it like it is with these, with, you know, he sees, uh, maybe because Charlie is so good, um, that he, see, he immediately sees how horrible all these kids are, that they're just, they're just awful. Do you think I will toss this question around. Do you think he knew, do you think Wonka knew where the tickets were going to go? Because the fact that here, I'll, I'll give you guys one, one tip mm. is the, uh, the guy from Argentina, the gambler who found the fifth ticket. Yeah. There was never any footage of, of quote unquote Slugworth. Cause Slugworth was at every ticket. Finding. Right. Right, every ticket reveal, but they never showed the the final ticket being shown, f- being found. And Slugworth, he's reclusive. So, do you think that that Wonka knew where where these tickets were going to go? I thought about and, that. And that Charlie was the ultimate destination for for the final ticket. I I think the end pretty much. I think that pretty pretty much justifies that theory. I think at the end because he he sought him out. It was a t- like when he says that I you know th- this was a test. Um, yeah. that's a very good uh, yeah, it's a very good point. And like I guess he had to go through like picking these horrible kids just to prove his point. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, he must have known then then that they were all like really bad bad children not were obviously not worthy of 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 the factory and the and the, and the prize but to, but, Char- but to put charlie in with that group sean do you think that was yeah. kind of like the part of the test or Nick? Uh, i it seems that way yeah and they were all kids like no adults mm-hmm. won these these tickets yeah. it was for everybody right it, it wasn't just for kids mm-hmm. you got one guest right and then and of course mm-hmm. they got to bring their parents because you're not going to go to a a strange person's candy factory. You know, we got to can't take candy from strangers, right? Because you can't get the, what you can spend yeah, the totally money goes against show. that. <laughs> yeah, Nick, Nick, what do you have for that? I don't, I don't think he planted them because I think that would have made it. Why not just send them in the mail and say, okay, you're, I'm inviting you to, you know what I mean? But well, I do think the, the it's just, it is kind of weird that they meet their demise so specifically to their vice. Right. Yeah. So I mm-hmm. think, I think, the fact that you had Slugworth there and you and find out in the end he's working for Wonka, right? They are watching who wins. And I think they are kind of exploring what their vices are. So I, I you know, I mean he finds he finds that extra coin. Yeah, well let me, put, let, yeah, let, yeah. let me put that to you then, Nick, because that's where I'm where I'm going with that is Charlie finds some money in a sewer. He goes to after the mania has died, right? Because yeah. the other ticket was supposedly found. He goes to the candy shop and he buys a, a scrum diddly umptious bar. Mm-hmm. And he wolfs it. He like inhales it, and he's like, he's like, give me another one. And the candy guy says, "Why don't you try a regular Wonka bar instead?" Yeah, yeah, right. And he hands it to him, and the camera kind of stays on him for a moment, like he kind of. He's got that creepy smirk on his face. Like, yeah, like, like here, like. <laughs> Here, here's the like. This is the one, like, because he, you know, it, it's not a rant. You know, it it mm-hmm. seems it doesn't seem like it was that random of a statement. He's like, well, why don't you try this one instead? Yeah. He's on the payroll. You know, Can I just say so, something about that? Good, good. In the beginning, he gives out free candy to all the kids. Yes, I was just them, wow. showering them. Give He's me that money, it. Charlie. You poor kid. Like, thank you, Sean. Thank you. It, I was going to. I was like, <laughs> you gave all this free candy to everybody in the world in the beginning scene. Yeah, he's Charlie singing the song. Like, the kids are all like, you know, he's throwing, yeah. you know, showering yeah. with candy. He's like, <clears throat> well, now he's got to make it yeah. back. <laughs> The kid who can't afford you know, candy, you're going to take that, that, you know, his last nickel. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of a bunch of kids. You want to look like the benevolent candy guy, but when it's one-on-one, you're paying. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Right? He wants, he's, you know. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. like, let's, like, is it Slugworth who's planning the tickets then? Maybe because, like, because he's there. Is he the one? So yeah, he might be the one that. You no, know, he's obviously he's being sure paid to the, do this. He's the, yeah, he's literally. When I watched it today, if you look at the scene in the Salt Factory mm. with Veruca Salt, uh, there's a scene. The scene is going on, and you can see the the floor behind them when they're unwrapping all the candy bars. Slugworth is actually carrying a case of chocolate to like one of the women. Okay. You, you have to watch that. it. Like I, I rewound. I'm like, wait, is that him? Because he was obviously there, but yeah. but he's carrying a box of, of chocolates. So yeah, so that makes sense too. That that Mr. Wilkinson Slugworth mm-hmm. uh, is is making sure that those boxes are found by the by the people that that he wants to find them, mm. right? Because you, so, you're right. All of a sudden, because he's always ha- he always happens to be there as well. So the theory then is what you're what you're proposing here is that just is asking. that Wonka handpicked Charlie because he's been observing him or whatever. Yeah. And everything else is just kind of, and, and I'm I'm kind of leaning towards now your theory. It's like it's all one big test, yes, handpicked yeah. to just see for sure if Charlie is the one, yes. and he passes the test, yes, just like everybody else is tempted by adults, and you know he's you know you got Uncle Joe, you know doing all this temptation too. It's like let's just give it to Slugworth. Come on, who needs that? You know, mm-hmm. and he passes the test in the end. That's that's and, and and also because Sean brought up with the fizzy lifting drinks, they came back down from that, right? Like Augustus fell into the chocolate river and he got taken out. Mm-hmm. You know, Mike shrunk himself, so there's nothing he can do. So all those other all the other kids kind of did it to themselves, but mm-hmm. Charlie. They drank the fizzy lifting drinks, but were able to come back down. So that seems to me like it was a forgive, like that was a forgivable sin because in the end, it was about the 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 everlasting gobstopper was the key. Yeah. So, right. so assumedly, if one of those other kids, let's say some of the other kids made it, and they kept the everlasting gobstopper, they would have failed anyway, even if they didn't yeah. do the bad things that they had done. Mm-hmm. Right. The key was giving back the gobstopper. Right. right, but the, he right. left so, the door so open. Where, yeah, Charlie could have done whatever he wanted. You know, the tw- the temptation was there when he says, "Oh, we can't. Oh, it's just it's still in the works." The the fizzy lifting drink. I mean, you know, but nope, nope, we can't give you any. But why bother showing them that if you're not cool. gonna, you know? So that that was an invitation for you know to see what what was what would happen. So yeah, yeah you're so you're kind of in the running. You know, good point. Yeah. Very good, Dean. Your your theory holds. <laughs> that's no it's great no it really is um, a lot of chocolate <laughs> yeah no it's just something i i'd always thought about it but mainly it, it, it started with that can with the candy guy just how he he, he points him in the direction of yeah. get of buying the chocolate mm-hmm. that has the ticket in it not one of the other yeah. you know another one of the other bars another He's minion of like, walker is most likely you yeah, know yeah. yeah absolutely he's definitely on the payroll yeah he's mm-hmm. definitely like probably the eyes and ears and he probably knows that Charlie doesn't have a lot because there's that terrible scene after the <laughs> after the final ticket is quote unquote found and they're in school and Mr. Turkentine is teaching them percentages, Sean, right? And it's kind of like, well, how many did you open? Yeah. He's like, oh, 100, 150. And then Charlie's like, two. Two? Like, oh, I can't 200? figure out just two. <laughs> you know? yeah. Terrible math teacher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At least he was honest. At yeah. least he didn't he try was, to Sean, do, do you do that with your students? Tell them that <laughs> the, 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 the quiz you had on Friday will be on Monday the, before you've learned it on the Friday? No. <laughs> no, I do not. You should try that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll go over well. <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to get away with it once. Maybe once. once. <laughs> Just once. Um, there there was some also in, in this film, there was some method acting going on uh, 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 apart from what Nick had told us about Gene Wilder mm. uh, wanting to do the whole Kane thing and, and that, um, there was a lot of scenes where where certain actors weren't told what was going to happen right. to get genuine reactions, especially the final scene between Jack Albertson, Charlie, mm-hmm. and and Willy Wonka when when he goes into the the beautiful half office. Um, <laughs> yeah, which is just really it's just a really cool. There's one really cool thing before I get to the the method acting part is 
when when Wonka goes to get the contract, right? Everything's in half. So the, the safe that it's in is is literally in half. He opens the outer door, he opens the inner door and goes in and gets the contract when he could have just reached yeah. for it. Like like the no, like the like the commitment to mm-hmm. to, to being in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, where most people would probably would have just reached for because right there, but he opened the half door and he opened the the inner half door, and then he got the contract out. Um, but what they what Gene Wilder had done is in the rehearsals during that scene with the Good Day, sir. Uh, he played it a lot lower. He you know played it. You know he he acted it and they did it, but as he they did it more and more, he rose his anger level to get to that point where they would you know kind of it would be a genuine reaction from them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a great Jack Albert. Like that's the scene I think that, that Jack Albertson gets to really shine in. Right. Eric, when he just, yeah. he like that's, he's been, he's been laying in wait, like almost like he like too good to be true. And then he's not surprised. Like you're a swindler and a cheat. And you know, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think he, you know, Jack Albertson really kind of rises to it. It's a, it's a great moment. Um, and you know, just the genius of Gene Wilder, just, having these very specific ideas and, and just, you know, that was him great success. You know, everything that he's ever done has been those kinds of decisions and, you know, um, but yeah, that reaction, I, I, can you imagine just, you know, from Charlie's point of view, the kid, you know, Ostrom's uh, point of view of him, Gene Wilder, just screaming at you like that, you know, just, you know, at an, like totally unexpected, you know, um, just yeah, I can't imagine that. I mean, she's because he's a maniac anyway. Everything <laughs> when he when he gets going, man, he's at his best when he's just so manic and so yeah, not him, crazed not him. and yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I think that having I, I've said it in the past, Sean too. I think mm-hmm. is it's important for these actors to take these roles seriously. Mm. Oh yeah. Like, like, like that's the only way these films I think endure is, is when, when you get, you know, if they're trying to just knock out a film and you're just hiring actors that are doing it, I think this is a, uh, I don't know if I'm, it's going to be a hot take, but it could be, this could be a bygone age because these, all these actors are character actors, but they're there to, to really deliver what they're supposed to. And, and the fact that even though it's a kid's film, it's, it has these adult overtones. And if those weren't, those beats weren't hit the right way. Mm-hmm. You get you get a campy film, right, Sean? Yeah, no, I agree. I I think I think the commitment is very important, uh, and everybody's committed. Everybody believes in what is happening and what has just happened, and it just it just all it just all works. It's mm-hmm. it, it's it's a creepy ride. It's a fun ride. It's a head scratcher. It, it's. I don't know. It's just a world, this world, the world of Willy Wonka. And, and when you see yeah. Gene Wilder, it makes sense that that's the way it is. Yeah. And, and Nick, you, see this, the uh, you see this ensemble cast. Yeah. And there's a lot of scenes when they're all together, all doing different things or having different reactions based on their character. So really is, a, there's a lot there. It's not just this like uh, intimate piece with just a couple of characters. A lot of times there's a lot of different things going on and all these actors really got to make sure that they're kind of yeah. contributing the right way to it, especially the scene when they're all like in the, in the beginning when they're all in that small little room. Yeah. I mean, every, every, every single person in, in this film is just, I think, perfectly cast. The only thing I would have wished for is Sammy Davis Jr. Cause I know he wanted that part, but they were like, <laughs> it, it, you're too recognizable. We, we don't want, to steal away that scene and, and the person who played the candy man was, was great in the movie, but I always would have wondered what it would have been like to have Sammy Davis jr. And he got the hit for the, you know, the yeah. song when he recorded it, but ev- even the kids, you know, like how hard is it to cast these kids to be believable and quirky and mm-hmm. it, it, they all, they all work. They seem so natural, you know? And, 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 and like, like Sean said, just committed and just really like, you know, that's what sells the movie. Cause like comedy shouldn't be forced and you shouldn't like the timing is so hard, you know? So the fact that they oh, were able to capture it, especially with the ensemble, when they're all on the screen together and when they're all doing stuff together. And it's those tricks, I think though, too, like, you know, like in the boat scene, I think that was another moment where they didn't know he was going to like say it in that kind of like in rehearsal, I think he was more down, down key. And, you know, so it, it, it brought those natural reactions 
Yeah, so I, I think you have a combination of that, right? Of of actors or an actor, the lead, really bringing his A game and bringing it to this children's film, um, and then the other actors going along. I mean, I, I don't think anybody doubt doubted for a second that Veruca Salt was a horrible per- like, oh, man. Like there, there was not a like she there was not a moment when when she let let down her character. No, right? No, I mean, yeah, and. You got a sense of the world that that guy, that that father was living in, and that his life was with just, the like, acid everything. with the wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace and harmony. Yeah, as, as they eat the rollaid. Yeah, and she's yeah, the only she one was, that has a song, right? She's the only one yes. that she just, yeah. she's, and she had the you know the chops to do that as well. But yeah. uh, but when I think about some of those lyrics uh, in that song, I want the world. Yeah, can you just imagine? If she, w- her as an adult, like what, <laughs> you know, you, you, it's almost scary in a way because you could, you, you know, would she have gone into politics? Could she have been the next Hitler <laughs> or, or, you know, or somebody like, you know, somebody that, yeah. that mad and that hungry, you know, like, um, yeah, it's, it's, it makes you think, you know, and that, and I think that's the beauty of this film, which. Yeah. They're, they're, they're <laughs> all products of their parents, right? She's a product of, of. The parents don't want to discipline her. They want to give her and pamper her, right? Mike TV is a yeah. product of parents that are too distracted. So he, so TV brings him up, and that's that's who he is. And then with Violet, her father's a, a, a you know, a, a slick talking salesman, and that's what she is. She's very competitive with with the chewing of the gum, and you know, so yeah. each one is a, a a product. And then of course Augustus, you know, his, his mother indulges him in in, in eating and letting him. Uh, so each one is literally. Uh, like a product of their environment, you know, and Charlie is too, is, is their, his, his parents and his grandparents are gentle souls and they're caring people, right? It's not about, even though his environment is lacking in material goods, it's not lacking in love, right? Mm-hmm. They, they make him the scarf and, 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 and uh, grandma uh, Josephina, you know, helps with the tassels and, you know, it's those little things that, that they're, you know, and, and having bread, a loaf of bread was like a big thing and we're going to have a big dinner out yeah. of it, you know? So you get the feeling that even though they're, they're lacking in the things that these other people have, they're not lacking in the parental guidance and the care, right? And even grandpa Joe is like, you know, you want it more. That's why you're going to win because you want it. You know, and and we'll get we'll get you that ticket. There's that great the great scene when when Grandpa Joe buys the 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 chocolate and they're like open it a little bit and it's not there and it's like you know such a heartbreaking scene. But he's like well you know and he hugs him and, and it's like that that genuine care that you know mm-hmm. that Grandpa Joe yeah he believes in those pie in the sky. All the other <laughs> occupants of that house are like nah come you know, but he's got that 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 dreamer uh, aspect that Charlie has right. That's what he sees in him. Um, and so I, so I, you really, I mean, it's literally in black and white in this film. It's a kid's film, but it's literally telling you about morals and morality and how, well, the about, state of uh, the state of the world, state of society as at yeah. large. Right. I mean, you know, it's nice guys finish last. The, it's the, it's the, the noble people. It's the people, the kind people who seem to have the hardest life, you yeah. know, it, 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 uh, you know, you see it and, you know, I got a question sure. for you guys. Um, do you think this kind of thing is lost today in kids' films and and you know and just as you know, for, for, for you guys are both actors. You've you've done some acting. You know, do you find that there's a big there's a difference between something like this at that time compared to what's going on today? With you know, there's a lot more delving into the psyche of of characters now and 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 their feelings and this kind of thing. Do you think that's overexposed? Do you think it, or do you think, do you prefer the whole like sort of, you know, telling these morality lessons, you know, in a sort of a parable type of way. And, and, and that's, and that drives the story or, or, or do you feel like, you know, you need this kind of like effects driven kind of thing to kind of enhance that. Cause this movie is, you know, you can't really say that this movie is going to get anything some awards for their special effects because it was pretty yeah, uh, pretty clunky, <laughs> pretty you know. But yeah, where did the three million dollars go? Yeah, but it's it's yeah. the actors that that build the world, you know. Yeah. Um, do you find that that's so what, do you think? Uh, what do you think, Sean? I'll let you go first, Nick. Okay, I, <laughs> I, I, I do. I don't think you can make a movie like this that has those kind of naive super good characters anymore. Like, I'll be honest yeah. with you. I, I don't see it. 
Um, and I think they really established Charlie, though, to be believable like that. You know, like he was really brought up and sheltered by his his. I mean, his mom is so hardworking, you know, doing the laundry. And I mean, they're making cabbage water, basically. That's their meals. Yeah. You know, it's not even soup. It's just like, you know, dirty water that they're drinking. And, you know, they're sheltering him, but they're also he brings them joy. And I don't know. Nowadays, you, you, you kind of need those kind of cynical kind of characters. I, I, I really like the new Wonka remake, you know, and it had, I think, some, you know, some of those kind of moral lessons in there. It doesn't compare to the original. Um, and it's certainly better than the Tim Burton version, right? Yeah. Um, mm. Which I, I love Tim, Tim Burton movies, but I thought that was like, yeah. Not I, got, I, I got stung by that one, so I'm not going to go <laughs> through anything Wonka related after. I I'll was tell like- you though, the, 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 the Wonka remake worked for me because it took the movie as its inspiration. There's a mm-hmm. lot of like, you know, I don't want to give things away, but if you go see it, there's a lot of things that tie back to the movie. Um, and I, I think it really, it's a prequel, you know, um, and I, I think Timothy Chalamet was, was fantastic in, 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 the, in the role. He didn't mimic Gene Wilder, um, but he had that innocence in the movie that we were talking about, Eric, that mm-hmm. I think nowadays, I, I think you need that in, in, in certain films, especially yeah. kids films. Um, and, but we live in an age where even just making a movie that's rated G is kind of, you know, passe. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but this is edgy, you know, this is this, like you were saying, it has dark moments and it's so edgy, right. but at its heart, there is that moral where at the end you say, okay, wow, this is, I see what they were doing here. And yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's not hitting you over the head, even though it's, it's so blatant, you know, when the Oompa Loompas sing all these songs, it's like, they're basically <laughs> telling you the lessons. Here's the moral kids, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Sean, what do, what do you think? Yeah. I, I guess I would tend to agree. You're not good. You don't see this kind of character anymore. Someone's always got a little bit of an edge to them and, you know, um, but I will, I will say that like when I watch this, I mean there is a creepy factor to this movie. Oh, yeah, a yeah too. absolutely. Um, the Slugworth stuff is just it doesn't. I don't know. It's weird. Um, <laughs> and just some of the things that happen in the factory, like the licking of the wallpaper. It's just, <laughs> you know, it's it's, it's, it's creepy. Like, yeah, it, it's like yeah. It's and it's it's like that so you have this wholesome character and then, and then you get all this weird stuff around it a little bit too sometimes um so you think do you think that's because it's a product of when it was made yes yeah right because that's 71 yeah i think it's 71 so I think like I said, you're, still, you're still in the counterculture hippie era yeah mm-hmm. and there's was, some of that you know licking of you know the wallpaper and 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 that whole boat scene is is oh you know, my god the chicken getting like cut yeah. off yeah. it's like a horror film at that point yeah. like it's scary for kids like I think kids legitimately would like get scared of that because yeah. it it's just it's scary I yeah. saw this when I was probably seven or eight um, on TV I think uh, on i watching with somebody who had already seen it. So they were kind of even almost feeding me like watch with this. So it's like, I wasn't able to like kind of experience it on my own without almost knowing something was going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as watching it later as an adult, uh, I still, lo- I love the movie, but there's some parts of it where I'm like a little cringy, a little cringy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Wow. And you know, I, I, I kind of meant, I, you know, there are certain things that obviously don't hold up yeah. in that sense, but you know, I'm just talking about the, <clears throat> the characters taking on the responsibility of basically carrying the story in, yeah. in a sense that you don't need a lot of, you know, special effects. You don't need a lot of this, this the, the, the technology to, and, and, and it's not just this. I mean, there's a lot of other things. Like we, we talk about Star Trek, we talk about Twilight Zone. We talk about all of these morality plays is what, and it's the actors, and and if they do it the the right way, hundred percent, they just yeah, you know. I, mean, you, I think you you, you, make the, a, like, you make a I great point. How bad the effects were when I'm yeah. watching it because because of what you're saying. The but you don't care. Do yeah, you don't care. Right. You, don't you don't care. care. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, right. and Eric, you, you you make a perfect point because you, at the time, I thought there was no one better suited to remake this than Tim Burton because he had that dark edge to it, and he was yes. going to bring that. That right. thing to it, and it was a mess. It was. I, I mm-hmm. walked out of that, and I'm like, I, th- I hated it. I'm like, yeah. Johnny was, Depp was like, he, you know, he was in that in that 
that lane of just always being a chameleon and being under makeup and you know the characters were forgettable and it was, I was 3D, you know, right? What's that? I think it was. I, I think it I was. I, 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 I saw it regularly. Asleep. I was tired. I didn't even make it through yeah. the movie. It was that bad. So, so that that's the point is it, you 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 hit the nail right on the head because that's a literal you know close closer mm-hmm. to a remake than Wonka. Right, because it had all the same elements, but it just didn't land. It was yeah, because he was right. too it focused was dark, on dark, the the dark, the dark steak, right? And and yeah, style the, over it, it just know? became that was Tim Burton. After a while, he just the traumatized kid yeah. was the was the, the 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 reoccurring theme in all his films. In this case, it's like he's got a sadistic dentist for a father, like yeah, if, you father, know, like yeah, it's just it just yeah, that kind of stuff didn't work. Just, it didn't work. And again, it's like getting it's like psychologically damaging, you know, and it's yeah, like and it looks like it took place in, in Gotham. It took like like in Batman like he has yeah. all that, that look and yeah. it just at that point after that in Planet of the Apes, I'm like this, you know, it's just he's it's not landing. It's he's, yeah. he's got to expand out of that. So um let's take this opportunity to kind of cleanse the palate and <laughs> let's do a round of three lies and the truth you ready sure right. you ready for some let me try not to mess it up this time so it's three <laughs> lies and the truth so three of the statements will be false, false. yes one, true. one of them one is true, true. one uh, okay. is factual yeah. sometimes we and you have three. played it the other way because i've we heard have. on some of the other show okay that's well, what makes it confusing we have we have so <laughs> so i'm gonna read four statements three of them are lies one of them is the truth got it and then we'll go from there and then uh, you at home you can play as well i'm gonna read them a couple times and then you can let us know on instagram facebook or youtube what your choice is and how you did so here we go four statements three are lies one is truth statement number one julie dawn cole who played Veruca Salt, uh, actually auditioned for the role of Reagan in The Exorcist. Hmm. Statement number two. Gene Wilder stated that he enjoyed working with the young actors, except for Denise Nickerson, who played Vi- Violet Beauregard, who Wilder said was a handful. Number three. Five of the Oompa Loompas actors were females. Hmm. Final statement. Director and choreographer Bob Fosse would come to the set every day to complain about filming going over schedule, stopping him from filming his movie Cabaret. (laughs) I'll go through through this one more time. Julie Dawn Cole, who played Veruca Salt, auditioned for the role of Reagan in The Exorcist. Gene Wilder stated that he enjoyed working with the younger actors, except for Denise Nickerson, who played Violet Beauregard, because she was a handful. Um, Statement number three, five of the Oompa Loompas were female. Statement number four, director and choreographer Bob Fosse would come to the set every day to complain about filming going over schedule because it was stopping him from working on his film. Who's going first? Let's go with Nick TV. No, I'm going to let Sean, Sean's going to, I want to make sure that it's, I want to, I want Sean to make sure that it's three lies and a truth. I don't want him to get nervous. No, no, Nick, Nick, go first. Uh, Nick TV. This is tough. Which one is true? I know one of them is, is, is definitely not true. Um, Okay. I don't know if I want to spoil it for the other ones, but good for you. one one is out. Uh, yeah, so that leaves me with three, and I'm gonna go with she auditioned for The Exorcist. Julie right? Dawn Cole that, auditioned for the role of Reagan in The Exorcist. Did that? The timing seems to be about the same. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. That's the one I'm picking as as the truth. That's the truth. Okay. Let's go over to Seanka, also known as Sean Grady. <laughs> I, three of these are lies. I want you to tell me what the true statement is. Do you want them again? Or are you good? No, 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 no. Right. no. <laughs> um, I'm going to pretend to fall out of my chair and then get back up like nothing happened. Uh, I'm going to go with go – with, uh, Bob Fosse. Bob Fosse. Director and choreographer Bob Fosse would come to the set every day to complain about the filming going over mm. schedule, stopping him from working on his movie Cabaret. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got two there, two totally different ones. Eric, what's it going to be, Jack? Both of those are really. I'm kind of torn between. I, I'm I'm going to go with Nick, and and do The Exorcist. Uh, okay, Julie Dawn Cole audition for the role of Reagan in The yeah. Exorcist. Okay, all right. Listening at home, lock in your answer as well. 
let us know on social media how you did, how you fared. Did I stump you or did uh, you see through my subterfuge of lies and got right to the truth? <laughs> hmm. Okay, so here we go. First lie. Five of the Oompa Loompa actors were female. That is a lie. Actually, only one was. Nine of them were gentlemen who liked to party, apparently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, there was one, one female. Uh, the second lie. Gene Wilder stated that he enjoyed working with all the young actors except for mm. Denise Nickerson. Uh, who was, was a handful. That's partially true. Uh, it was Mike TV that was Mike the big TV problem. That was the problem. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so much so that uh, I think in the uh, the room with all the contraptions in it, there was a uh, a horn. Uh, it was supposed to be bees, but it was actually wasps in a in a jar. And he, he opened up the jar and let all, let them all out. Um. And he got stung in the face for that. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> well, Wilder was none, none, none too, he none wasn't too really high. acting Mike TV. He's yeah, really he was being a real actor. pain in the ass in real yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. But he turned out to be a good guy. That's what yeah. we, That's what uh, Gene Wilder said afterwards. He's like, you were terrible, but you're okay now. Yeah, yeah as a kid, you were just off. <laughs> terror. So we've got, two, we've got two statements left. Julie Dawn Cole auditioned for the role of Reagan in The Exorcist. <laughs> And then uh, director and choreographer Bob Fosse would come mm. to us every day to complain about the filming going over schedule, stopping him from starting work on Cabaret. What do we want? Do we want the truth or the lie? I don't know. What do you want me to decide? Just do the lie. Yeah. Just, just, just do the lie. Me. Yeah. The lie, the thing that is false, <laughs> it's not true, is that... Julie Dawn Cole did not audition for the role. Oh. Wait, wait. Denise Nickerson was considered for it, but her family said, we don't want you doing this film because it seems it seems like it's a little yeah. too much for you. Yeah. So actually, Violet, Violet Beauregard was in the running. Okay. Which means that director and choreographer Bob Fosse would come to the set every day to complain about them going over schedule and filming because he needed to start filming his film Cabaret, yep. <laughs> which is true. So Sean Grady, you redeemed. Congratulations, Sean! From the disaster of you. I just read that recently before we got on the show. So. Oh, ah, okay. Nice. I have to say though, that set was spectacular. You know the yeah. fact. I know it's cheesy now and everything, but they literally built that set. You know mm-hmm. where they walk in and it's all candy and you know That's chocolate river and okay. you know yeah. It's well, but they blew it on that first scene. The rest of it, like the invention yeah. rooms, was a total dump. I'm like, you're yeah. gonna invent. Look. That's what. The, well, that's what they wanted it to look like. I, I I read about that where it was supposed to be like this inventing room, but he wanted it to look more like a, a mad scientist laboratory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where where all this craziness was going on, like throwing the coat in the thing. Like, and throw, I never want to eat anything. That comes out of that. And then Mike TV eats this exploding gum and goes, <laughs> I love it. Like thrown into the, into the, <laughs> <rock Yeah. laughs> uh, well, thank you everybody for playing. Congratulations, you, Sean. Give, give Sean a, a, a round of applause. <laughs> there we go. Take it. Be quiet. Totally redeem myself. Yes, you have. After that disaster of not even understanding where you were, not, I'm not, not even sure you knew, you knew you were on yeah. a podcast. I, I'm not sure. And then, uh, <laughs> totally, you were playing a different game. But uh, you, you, you have totally redeemed yourself. You, and you if I got it wrong, wrong it's it's my fingers though. crossed behind my back. Let's like, right? <laughs> yeah, but Sean, was it really a guess then? No, I knew, knew. It. no I knew it. But I'm just saying, if I didn't know played it, it well, you played I was it well. Cross my fingers, and then I. Oh wow, man! All For right. someone who knew it, you were like, you know, ah, oh, which one could yeah, it be? I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, yeah. he kind of played he it. Played it well. Played, played it well. It well. Mm-hmm. You did well. Well played, sir. Well, you played the you played the game well. <laughs> Game didn't play you. The second game. best poker face that we've seen on this, on <laughs> yes, this podcast. It's, it's, it's a, you know, yeah. Totally kept it together. All yep. right. Well, why don't we do a, uh, let's do a round of, of a quick round of favorite scenes. Um, there's a lot to chew on because there's Ooh. so many great performances. It's like, there's even, like I said, even the bit players, even those vignettes, those, those people are selling each and every little scene and they're only in one scene, but they totally yeah. like really give you they give you the whole they give you the whole you, they give you your money's worth for each scene that everybody's in so let's start with nick nick what what's one that really kind of 
I love the ending. I love all the kids' deaths. Oh, or what, wait, wait, maybe they, they didn't die. They didn't die. Okay. <laughs> I have to. I have to say, uh, "Pure Imagination." That's a beautiful song, and it's just really heartfelt. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I love that scene. I mean, that's that's to me, that's the heart of the movie. I love that. So that's what I. Yeah, think. it actually gives you an insight to Wonka that is maybe not so as crazy as he as we're led to believe or eccentric, mm-hmm. right? That you know. Yeah. He's got something, you know, there is, he kind of does reveal a little bit about, about his, his kind of philosophy on life. Yeah. Really mm-hmm. is what it is. You know, it's not a crazy, crazy manic song. It's, it's actually a, a very nice, very nice ballad yeah, written by Anthony, song. Anthony Newley. Mm-hmm. Sean, what do you got? Seanka? I, 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 you know, I, I, my favorite scene, but I noticed something about my favorite scene last night when I was watching I, I always love them, the fizzy drink scene when they get, when they're able to fly. Cause I mean, who doesn't want to do that? You know, get up there. But I saw like it, in Charlie's pants, you can oh, yeah, see yeah. like, like well, wires. I'm like, wires. Oh, that's terrible. I wish I yeah. didn't see that, but I love it. I think that's fun. Him and his grandfather and you know, they, they're able to get out, you know, they don't get chopped up, which is good. Yeah. But I always love that because it's something I wish I could do. You know, I wish. Yeah, I they, they didn't have Matrix up. level wire work then. It was a yeah. like, harness underneath the pants. Yeah. And they yeah, put or the, no the CG to erase the, the wires from the from yeah. scene. Yeah. <laughs> but the bubbles kind of hit it well, didn't it? Bullet like, time yeah. was about uh, 28 years away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's reminiscent of that Mary Poppins scene, right? Where they laugh and they start floating up, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, Eric, Eric, what do you got? You know, I'm going to piggyback on Nick. I mean, this I love the boat scene. It like mm-hmm. it is the darkest scene in the movie. I mean, it, it's just I, you start to wonder. I mean, like Gene Wilder is just a, a absolute fucking genius in that scene. I just love <laughs> when he gets crazy like that, and mm-hmm. then he just stopped the boat, and then boom, everything just you know. I love that that cut, but I'm also going to piggyback on the song because I I I kind of picked up on the the idea that you could see in his facial expressions that he's up to something. You could definitely see, you know, uh, you feel, I get the impression that he is, oh, you know what? I, I created something great here, but it's for time for me to move on. I kind of got that vibe through the song. Like I, you know, you, you know, it's going to happen, you, you know, but, and, but I think watching it again, you really get to see that in his eyes. And it's just the way he's like looking at, you know, sort of daydreaming and, and just, you know, he's tired. It, it feels like he's tired that this, you know, it's time for me to let somebody share this or something. I, I got that impression anyway. I don't know. But uh, I just thought, you know, just looking at him and the way he, you know, sang the song, the pauses, the, you know, um, was, was just, uh, just can't say enough about the guy. Just, he's sorely yeah. missed. Yeah, you know, yeah. Sure. He's just yeah. Before yep. I get to my favorite scene, observation at the very end when when Wonka is in his office, he's smoking a cigar. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like I'm watching. I'm like there's smoke coming from the desk. I'm like what? Like I was I was, I was like and I had to watch it again. And then then he like has the cigar. I'm like I was like so it almost seems like he's almost like a like a like a huckster like like. The, doesn't even like isn't living his what what he portrays himself to be but back then it wasn't it wasn't a thing anyway my favorite scene is is a bunch of them well it's a bunch of things that gene wilder does uh every everything he does to how he disrespects the parents (laughs) yes right stop help please murder you know like he's so sardonic to the parents you know uh you know oh all, all all questions must be in the form of writing yeah, you know, and then he just and he just totally dis like he he totally like he he is it's very disinterested in what the parents have to say, mm-hmm. right? He's he's more focused on even even though he knows the kid, you know, three naughty kids gone and whatever. Like he knows that these kids are bad, um, and he knows that, and it, he probably knows that it's the parents that are the reason, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like, uh, you know, so so his dismissiveness in at each turn, especially with the whole contract scene, yeah. you know, where Sam Barga, oh, I know I contracts, I use them all the time. They're for suckers, you know, mm-hmm. and and he's just so well, you know, you don't sign, you don't get in. 
So yeah. I just like that. I like, I like how that. It, it, all the fine prints at the very yeah. bottom. <laughs> you know, it's and it's like, funny at the, at the end, at the end when he gets the contract out, it's it's only half the contract. That's why he's like, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, memo bis puna cotum delic. You know, because and every time he says etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, it's because half the contract is gone. When when you look at it, it's only half there. So I mean, I'll tell you this move like the, it's those little little things that they pay attention to. For sure, that, yeah. that that make this but like like what you know those are easy corners to cut. He could have pulled out a full contract, but yeah. the fact that it was half, you know, it's all those little details that that help elevate this. You know, again, not treating it because it is as much an adult film. I'm, I would say, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. and I think that was the intent was is actually probably gear like most of most good children's films. It has that other level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. That that like as a kid, you, you're watching it. And as an adult, you're getting the stuff that the kids are not picking up on, you know, that sardonic humor and and, and the satire of society with all those vignettes and. Yep. You know, it, it might be fun for a kid, but as an adult, you're like, well, this is the way society is when, you know, like and they had to make it so uh, ludicrous too. Right. I mean, you have what they don't, why it's, there's no logical explanation for why everything's cut in half. It's just yeah. adds yeah. to the eccentricity of the whole thing and the, the glass elevator, you know, yeah, well, we cut to ribbons and every, every there's like an element of danger in every little, <laughs> in every scene. It's almost like an Indiana Jones movie in a sense. Like it is like, there's like pitfalls and, you know, these kids are put in real danger and he knows this too, which is, which makes it even more, you know, and, and then his attitude about the whole thing is like, you're right. He's just like, yo, no, don't stop. You know, like, cause he knows he's like, maybe they're not in real danger, you know, uh, but they just they get what they deserve, and I think. Yeah. Or like I said, when they go through the glass elevator, we'll be torn to ribbon, possibly. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like maybe I don't you know. We'll see. You know, yeah. so very yeah, very kind of uh, you know, just kind of takes <clears throat> things as they come. So uh, you know, uh, if you haven't seen this, oh boy, you're in for a treat. We gave it all away, but it's it's There's one of those so ones much that, more though. Yeah, mm. as as an adult, you can watch this, and you'll get like I said, you'll get a whole. I can watch it. Uh, I'm able to watch it from both aspects. I can watch this with kid eyes and 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 get emotionally tied to mm-hmm. it, it of Charlie's journey. But then I can also watch the 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 satire stuff and totally be laughing as an adult about yeah. how they you know about the greed and 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 how uh, how it consumes everybody in, in trying to find these uh, the golden tickets. So. Um, it's available for streaming right now, currently on uh, you know Prime and Google, wherever it is, it's it's available. But you can always, I'm sure, Eric, do you have the uh, physical? I do. Got the media. I do. I do own it. Yep. At the 4K? <laughs> uh, I don't think it's in 4K. I don't think they released uh-huh. it in 4K yet. No, but I have a Blu-ray. It's fine. All right, Blu-ray looks close just, enough. Looks just great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Did it come with a golden ticket inside? No, it did not. Uh, oh, sadly, God, they, missed, they missed an I, opportunity. They, That's they made like an anniversary edition, whereas you know, but that you know, I, I just have the regular Blu-ray. Uh, they missed a they missed a, an opportunity there. Yeah. there is. each one. Yeah, you know, and then you do like a meet and greet, or you win something. No, I'm know. sure. Yeah, like I seem to recall, there was like a box, and it had something in it. I'm sure it had like it might have even bar? might have yeah. even had a you know the uh, piece of candy or something with it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Sure. Yeah, you probably find it on eBay for like a thousand dollars or something. <laughs> Should have had a little sample of of, yeah. of blueberry juice. Yeah, little yeah. Blueberry. <laughs> Violet, you're turning violet. Violet, oh, that was terrible. You just see like the light go on her. It's just like the the yeah. It's amazing what you can do with lighting, right? <laughs> it's it's, a, it's actually a pretty neat effect until until they totally put all the blue makeup on her. Yeah, face. Yeah, and it's like wait, what? It's like yeah, a totally I, different I like shade. <laughs> Yeah, I like the blue light effect better than the blue makeup. I, th- yeah. I thought it was more effective, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this episode of the 3324 Podcast. Nick TV, also known as Nick Leshy, thank you for joining us. We appreciate mm-hmm. it. You're gonna Thank you. Everybody's going to go check out the City of Kick blog. There's going to be a link in those good old show notes that you can check out once you're done with the episode. So thank you, Nick, for thank you. joining us and uh, appreciate it. Mr. Shonka. <laughs> If this was like, a, if this was like a Star yeah. Wars like Willy Wonka, I knew it. <laughs> it yeah, it, it's the perfect name. If this Thank was you. a Star Wars Willy Wonka mashup, you'd be Chushonka. Chushonka. <laughs> <Sure. laughs>
<laughs> Chu Shonka. Uh, okay. <laughs> Gentlemen, listen, it's it's always a pleasure to have you guys here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, we, we happy love, to be, yeah, yeah. Be back with you all. Yep. Yeah, Sean mm-hmm. Grady, a drama from the past. Go ahead and hit the hit the link in the show notes for that too. Go ahead and follow them on Facebook. Uh, check out what they're doing. It's it's always good. Uh, it's good fun stuff. And of course, we love always having them having them on with us. Mm-hmm. And of course, Eric will be on the comfy couch. I'm on my new '80s. Office chair, the very IKEA specific, green chair. Very eighty. I wonder why is it eighties. I wonder. I'm, I'm curious. I'll, t- I'll take a, I'll take a picture of it, and you'll be like, "Wow, this is like from a dentist office." Put that in the, the show notes. <laughs> yeah, put put the photo yeah, in it. <laughs> we need to see it. Link, link to the. Uh, we'll what link, we'll link to a picture of the green IKEA chair first. There you we go. Have to, we have to, it's, it's right over. It's it's been banished. It's right over there. No. Uh, so I've got the uh, I've got the the. It's like sand colored tweed, <laughs> like like tweed fabric. It's so 80s. It's like, you know. Anyway, enough about furniture. We'll do an IKEA episode <laughs> in the future and we can kind of talk about our favorite picks and sofas, chairs, and love seats. But for now, for Nick, for Sean, for Eric, this has been Dean asking you to please be kind and go ahead and rewind. You've been listening to the 3324 podcast with Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important, so make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 